Hey all, here at osmvtxtrees.com, you're watching our video review of the Firefly cell phone generation 2. Again, Firefly is a company infamous for, for making cell phones for younger teens, younger kids, and also for elders out there. So it offers a very simplistic design that's not too complicated, or for people that aren't looking for a fully-fledged smartphone at the moment. The simplicity of the original Firefly, however, has been to some extent lost on the second iteration version, which offers a lot more technology and packs a greater amount of punch in features such as Siri Bluetooth, such as the camera on the back, such as the shift keyboard on the front, and so and so forth. If we take a closer uh, look at the design in general, the general shape of the, de of the device is still retained from the original Firefly. Um, you can still customize the device in multiple colors, and we have the blue iteration here, which is semi-transparent, and you can still see what's going on in the inside like the original Firefly. What has been changed, however, is the inclusion of LED lights on the, in on the inside of the product, so unlike the original, the phone will not illuminate and turn on with different colors and lights like a Christmas light when the product is in darker environments. Still, it's a pretty cool design in general just to take a closer look at, and you can see the guts of the phone from afar. Taking a closer look at the front of the unit, we have access to a 1.5 inch color TFT display. It's a little bit small for our taste, but for most applications like viewing images, looking at the main menu, it's uh, pretty intuitive and easy to see. Viewing angles are only so-so, which is a little bit disappointing considering the Firefly can also play back MP4 videos, can also play back MP3 songs and images, which take advantage of a better screen, and that would have been nicer. As you can see here on the bottom, there is a shift keypad, very similar to Motorola's shift keyboard, and it's on the same technology as also BlackBerry Storm. What we mean is that when the device is in different applications, the keypad itself will change correspondingly, and it has a tiny LEDs that actually change orientation when it's in different applications. Also note that the entire keypad is one flush piece of plastic, and in order to press down on it, the entire keypad will actually press downwards, just like on the BlackBerry Storm's touchscreen display. Display. So it's very cool. It's essentially a flat piece of plastic that presses down like one giant button. This entire keypad is one button that presses down for that tactile effect like pressing a real button. So it's a lot of technology that's going into this um, kid-like cell phone that we are kind of excited about, mainly this keypad. Taking a closer look at the design, on the left-hand side we have access to a volume rocker, for, it's pretty easy to press. The top features the earpiece, and under the screen we have access to a menu button, which is the Firefly logo, two hotkeys, and also a talk end key, which dubs as the power on and off button. The right-hand side features a 2.5mm headphone jack, which is disappointing. We would like to see a 35 standard headphone jack for listening to music. And there's nothing on the top, and on the bottom we have a mini USB for charging and syncing, a loudspeaker that's indeed very loud and very clear, the batteries behind the back cover and also the SIM card, and a micro SD card for expanding the memory for video content. And there's also the aforementioned uh, 1.3 megapixel camera which is fixed focus and not audio autofocus. One downside to having the shift keypad, even though it's very cool and easy to see under darker environments, is that under under the sun it's going to be difficult to see because of the uh, keypad's light is a little bit dim and it glares quite a lot as you might expect so um, it's, it becomes difficult to see on a hot day at a beach for example. Otherwise the buttons are risen above the surface and fairly tactile and easy to press. Taking a quick look on the main interface with access to the contacts to our music player, the date information, some um, battery life information, and some general reception information. Battery life on the Firefly is very, very good. It lasts about a week or so before we had to recharge with moderate usage, which is great considering it's a kid's phone. And as far as reception is concerned, it's also top notch. The Firefly phone comes unlocked and is priced at around $150, which is a moderate price tag for a specially designed kid's phone. And again, you can use it with both AT&T and T-Mobile's 3G networks. And again, reception on both are very, very good, which is important you know, as a kid's phone or slash emergency phone. Now, what is gone from the original Firefly is pre-programmed numbers. You can still program it and have parental controls on the cell phone, but there aren't any preset numbers where you can just press 1 and automatically dial mom, or press 2 and automatically dial dad. Instead, it's kind of like a more colorful, colorful version of a general cell phone that kids can use to dial numbers randomly on the go, so it's more of an advanced device with a, a kind of a kid-like shell, but um, the functionality of the actual parental controls to some extent has been stripped back uh, compared with the original. So it's more easier to use, but again, it's more advanced than the original Firefly um, was, which makes sense because kids these days are very, very smart and they know how to use iPads. So just, you know, the fact is this phone will still be pretty easy to use for them, I suppose. 
Pressing the menu key here brings up the five-way navigation toggle on the inside, and the OK key is actually uh, slowly risen above, slowly um, dipped below the surface of the plastic. As far as the actual clickiness of the keypad is concerned, it's pretty easy to use, it's pretty clicky. It is plastic rather than glass, which is not as comfortable to use, but it's still tactile and very, very responsive, um, and people will get used to it over time, I think. There's also settings in the main uh, settings store for the Fly Store for downloading more applications over a wireless connection. The aforementioned camera, which is uh, pretty good, it takes pretty decent shots, surprisingly. Um, it's a little bit dim for our taste, but uh, it definitely does the job on the go. And camera shutter uh, is pretty loud and also takes images pretty fast. You can also edit them and then send them over email, MMX, or text message. You can also delete them correspondingly. Um, you can also shoot quick video clips on the go, but they aren't a very good resolution. Um, just nice to have that as a kind of emergency feature if you are in a situation to have with you that the original lacks that we like uh, the device we like that this phone actually has here. There's also a multimedia player on here for playing back videos and movies. The screen is kind of limited, again, by the viewing angle in the smaller real screen real estate, but it does the job and reads back the file formats pretty well. A few basic games are on here, and alarms, a stopwatch, a few games, basic Java applications like Bubble Bash, uh, Jewel Quest is also on here, and it plays back games pretty well. Again, the screen does a nice job of displaying back colors, um, and the speaker is very loud. We can turn back the speaker um, for the sound uh, correspondingly, but we can then press it just to launch the actual game itself, which works pretty well. And um, as far as the actual experience of the game, I would say that it works back pretty well. The screen is a little bit small and hard to read the graphics and the text, but you can also download more games directly from the Play App Store or the Fly App Store in this case. There are a few contacts preloaded into the unit that you can actually see and edit as you might want to. There's also a mailbox for your email, some basic calendar and basic time information, date information, um, and essentially that's it. There's also some basic settings that you can go through and change the basic data information. So overall, as a phone, it works well. Um, again, we are, do like the keypad. We are fans of the technology, but it's not the most simple to use keypad. Um, again, it orientates itself automatically. Like in the music player, there's now a play pause key, um, which works pretty well. The speaker is loud. The battery life is great. The design is pretty cool, um, and it's all definitely more advanced than the original Firefly. So if you are looking for an unlock device for your kids to have that's durable, that's unique, then perhaps the Firefly Generation 2 phone will catch your eye. However, just know that's not the most parental you know, um, advisory, it's not the most limited device that you can purchase, it's not the most simple to use phone that's available out there. Thanks for watching here at OSMVTXRoots.com. This has been our video review of the Firefly Generation 2 kids cell phone.